All right, I'm working on the little uh, 1776 this morning. Uh, just got all the piston cylinders pin fitted and honed and uh, ring gapped. So I'm gonna take you over here and show you something on this. Uh, I use this rag to uh, clean all the ring landings and rings, and this is what came off of those brand new pistons. So you guys that are just sticking them in, thinking they're good to go. That's a lot of dirt. And then I want to show you something else that I've never really done before, but I thought I would do this time just to show the amount of uh, stuff that comes off of these. You know, when you buy a uh, lower quality piston cylinder, you're going to have to do some work to make it, you know, where it'll run in the motor with some longevity. Uh, the piston to wall clearance usually isn't correct, and you can leave it, and it'll just wipe all your coating off the pistons. This is a thin coating anyway. So, uh, I like to hone the cylinder, fit the ring to the cylinder. Uh, there's no book that has the magic formula for your uh, ring gap. It's, it's according to how hot the motor is going to run, the driving condition, the barrel is going to see. And uh, all that comes into effect. So, I always hone every cylinder. I always gap the rings and balance the pistons just for... Uh, giggles but i wanted to show you the amount of metal that comes off here i don't hone these excessively but i do run a bead hone through here to knock the uh the high spots off you know they're roughly machined they're not finished hone and they slap the piston in there dirty and it's got a little machine oil so i like to clean those nice and clean and then uh put my rings back on after i uh gap them put the proper oil in there, space my rings out, and then reassemble the uh, barrels. I can throw some paint on them usually so they don't rust. But uh, I want to show you the amount of metal that comes off of these with a light hone. And uh, I mean a light hone. So this is what your motor would see after a few thousand miles, not even that, probably first start up, you would uh, notice your metal in the oil it gets a little metallic -y. this is why so that's all metal uh and i honed four cylinders over this so uh that's a good reason to run a hone through these just a bead hone go down to your uh local parts supplier get you a nice bead hone and it'll put a nice cross hatch in there and it'll knock all the uh, high spots off and that's what we're seeing on this magnet this is all metal, a lot of it. And that's gonna find its way right into your brand new engine if you don't do a light hone on these cylinders and knock all that stuff off. So that's just a little pro tip. Uh, I don't know how much it'll extend the life of the motor, but uh, that's a lot less metal in the motor. After the initial fire up, I mean, it wouldn't take long for that to be in the uh, oil circulating through the bearings. So, run a bead hone through there, set your ring gap up. They're usually coming around 16, 18. You know, if you know you're going to run hot, open it up 19, 20. And uh, you'll get a lot longer life out of the cylinder. And then if you hone it, you're pissing at the wall clearance. You know, you can set that. You can measure it with the feeler gauge and uh, you know make sure you have a decent amount. Uh, you don't want it to scuff the pistons on fire up. So that's why I do the initial hone, the ring gap, and uh, the most important part of the hone is running through there and knocking all the high spots off the rough machine and getting that metal that's gonna go in your motor out before you start the engine. So. You're trying to eliminate all the breakup friction points, you know, uh, before you start the engine. You can start the motor, you can drain the oil a couple times and your oil will clean up, but you've already done the damage once all this metal has run through your uh, bearings. So I try to eliminate that every step of the way that I can, you know. I've even got to where I uh, made a tool where I run the camshaft in the motor before I fire the motor up now make sure everything is cool so 
it's just uh crazy stuff like that that makes the difference so i did uh note that uh, these a and a pistons came uh pretty well balanced i have noticed that about these you know you can talk a lot of crap about different stuff but i was pretty impressed with the weight you know they're within a gram or two which is pretty good for a uh, cheaper set of piston cylinders it's within one gram there so 23 24 we have one at uh, 424 I got a couple light wrist pins by a gram so I'll be able to balance those perfectly and uh, but pretty impressive right out of the box. I've seen better quality piston cylinders uh, be further off on the weight. So that's a little update on this baby. I'm a little behind, but I'm trying to catch up. I gotta do the cylinder head still, but I do have the, uh, the, slim, the assembly together. It went really good. And uh, it's looking good now. So uh, hopefully I'll get the uh, long block built today and uh, get the car in here, get the motor installed and all that good stuff. So I'll have to put all the sheet metal on and figure that puzzle out. But uh, that'll go pretty quick once I get the motor built. Got some uh, parts from my FE build, totally unrelated to Volkswagen stuff. Uh, this is gonna be an Edelbrock build, but uh, never received the cylinder heads or the intake manifold, but we do have some goodies. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff's on hold right now. Raw materials are hard to get. Uh, Edelbrock made a move from California to uh, Mississippi. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and build this engine with what we have. We have a uh, Edelbrock water pump, Edelbrock valve covers, Edelbrock fuel pump. Uh, I think they gave us an air cleaner and a carburetor. Got a distributor there. Uh, picked up a few more pieces over here. Got a timing chain, uh, engine bearings, ring set. Got an oil pump on order, uh, camshaft and lifters, and uh, we should be assembling that soon. So we'll have the uh, Dragon motor running. Where you guys follow CT Moog over there. He has a project called the Swamp Dragon, and this is the uh, the motor for it. So I did the cylinder heads a while back. We were gonna replace those with some aluminum ones. We held on to those, thank goodness. So they're ready to go. And uh, just have to get a few more pieces. Got the crank right there. So that'll be coming up. I don't know if I'll film that. I'll probably uh, make some videos for him over on his channel. And uh, or he'll come over and film it because I'm not that good at it. His uh, subscribers would throw rocks at my videos, I think. But, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. Got another tranny over here, CT, more CT stuff. That's for his gear. We gotta put the axles in this. This is a Rancho box. Well, they say it's a Rancho box. I don't know if it is or not, but that's what it's supposed to be, a Rancho box. And that's how they come, no axles. So you have to uh, put your axle assembly in there and uh, something to do that for them. And then I have some uh, ball joints to press in for them. Let's get that done. And uh, yeah, CP, CP1 was nice enough to help him out with some uh, ball joints and some parts for the gear. So he supplied him with uh, all these goodies. And some axle boots, some uh, sunflowers, uh, brand new side gears, new fulcrums. So uh, thanks CP1 for the help on that project be getting that going probably next week I'll be hanging out here working on Volkswagens so I'm a little behind I hope I get caught up uh, next week sold the uh, 1600 down here I need to put some sheet metal on that I got some rocker arms dug up for it have to get that going that's a cat sliding on the roof but anyway we need to get this uh, put together got some uh, intake manifolds ordered Got dual carbs, and this is going to be going in a sand rail. He has a uh, pretty nice motor in the rail. It's got some super flow heads and stuff on it. We're going to take that motor out, put this one in, and freshen up the, uh, I think it's a 1915. 
69 by 94 with super flow heads i'm going to freshen that motor up and it'll be for sale coming up and he's going to go with something more streetable that he can use on the beach and cruising around like he does so it's all about you know fitting the motor to your driving conditions so that's what's happening here if you guys are caught up thanks for uh watching the videos thanks for subscribing thanks for leaving the comments hitting that like button all that stuff i don't say thank you all the time and uh i do appreciate it and uh if you're not subscribed please subscribe because that helps the channel would like to get a few more subscribers this year don't know if that's possible but doesn't hurt to ask so uh you guys have a good day and uh get out there and build some motors